All right. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm I'm sorry I'm late. It was taking a really long time for the um, streaming to start. So I hope that you're all still with me and welcome to Sweet and Gentle Yoga. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about the props that we'll be using for our class. Today's theme is um, the hidden gifts of hardship. So um, one thing that you might like to use for the end of class is a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, you can use a pile of pillows or um, a couple of rolled up blankets or a sleeping bag that's been rolled. Um, also, you might like to have a few blocks. And um, if you don't have blocks, you can use a couple of cans of soup or um, a stack of books, really sturdy books, um, for one of the poses towards the end. Uh, probably not soup cans for that one, but you could use those for some salutations. And um, sometimes I'll instruct something and you don't quite have the range of motion that you'd like to use. Um, so you could have a strap or belt from like a regular belt that you would wear around your waist. Um, and then a blanket to sit on and maybe to cover up with at the end of class. So you might want to have one or two blankets. So while you're gathering your props, um, I have a few announcements to make. <clears throat> so um, I want to thank everyone, all of my uh, paying clients for joining me today and making this channel possible. And I'd like to thank everyone who has visited the website to make a donation. Um, today is our last YouTube class that will be done regularly. I'll still do YouTube from here, you know, here and there, but we're moving our platform to Zoom, which is more interactive and I can actually see your lovely faces if you so choose to. And I'll be sending out the links today in my mailing list. So today is Tuesday, March 31st. Be sure you're on your the mailing list today um, so that you can get the links um, to the Zoom classes. So make sure if you're not on there, make sure you do that today by like 1 p.m. I'll be sending out those links. Um, and you can always join our email list and get updates. And you can do that at the yogalily.com. That's T H E Y O G A L I L Y.com. Um, hmm, what else did I want to tell you about? I think that's it. <laughs> so we are going to start laying on our backs today. So you can go ahead and lay down. I'm going to go ahead and bring my props back to where I'll be using them. <clears throat> And I'm going to show you two different views for how I want you to lay down. So one is to lay, um, so you're going to be laying the same way. I'm just going to show you two different views so you can understand better. So your feet are wide. You want your feet as wide as your mat. I had, this is an extra wide mat, so your feet might not be as wide as mine, but, and then you're going to bring your knees together. So that's important. The knees are together and the feet are as wide as you can be. And then the left hand will go on the heart, the right hand on the belly. So what you should be feeling is a nice stretch through the outer hips, maybe in the hamstrings, maybe even in the lower back. Okay. And I'll show you what that looks like from another angle, just in case um, you're having a hard time understanding that. <clears throat> so your feet are as wide as the mat, or maybe wider, and the knees are together. So you have this collapsed look, and you might even be balancing on the insides of your feet here. 
Left hand on the heart, right hand on the belly. Center the head and let the eyes close. We're gonna do our centering breath here. So exhale through the nose, empty the lungs completely and inhale through the nose, fill the belly, ribs and upper chest. And exhale from the upper chest, ribs and belly. Inhaling through the nose, filling the belly, ribs and the upper chest. And exhaling from the nose, emptying the upper chest, ribs and belly. Let's inhale to the count of one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Inhaling one, two, three. Exhaling 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 one, two, three. And continue that breath count on your own. The breath should be smooth and deep. The next time you exhale, go ahead and let the breath be natural. And relax the hands down by the sides with the palms turned up. Allow the knees to open and then extend one leg out and then the other. Have the feet nice and wide. Turn the shoulder blades under. Take a breath. And exhale, relax and let go. And notice how the body feels after that posture and after the breathing. And shake the legs out a little bit here. Oh, and we're going to bend the knees again and bring the feet together. And we're going to essentially do the opposite of what we first did. So you're going to bring the soles of the feet together and open the knees. So it's the reverse. You might like to have a couple of blocks underneath your knees. And you can have them on the low, the medium, or the high setting. You want to feel that you're getting a mild stretch through the groin muscles. Not too intense here because we're going to be here for a few minutes. So you can go ahead and make sure you're comfortable. And 
<clears throat> if you don't have blocks, you could put a couple of pillows underneath your knees as well or thighs. And then the hands could either rest on the belly, but it may be a good idea to reach the arms up overhead and stretch out the arms. Or you could have the, you could even bend the elbows and hold the elbows. But you don't, you want to find what's right for you. So find your edge. Holding the elbows is too much. Go back to just having the arms overhead. And if that's too much, maybe you can, might even want to come into cactus arms with the elbows bent. Or you could just go back to having your hands on your belly. And you're going to stay right here, laying on your back with your eyes closed, taking a few deep breaths. And while you do that, I'm going to start making your way up closer to the camera for the next demonstration. But I want you to stay right there, just taking some long, meaningful breaths. So next we'll be staying right in the pose that you're in and we're going to do the eye movements. So I'm moving nice and close to the camera in case you need a visual for what that looks like. All right. So if you wear glasses, remove them and set them beside you. If you wear contacts, just be mindful of how um, you're moving. So being sure that you're w nice and relaxed and your head can stay still. And another um, hand position might be to interlace the fingers and bring the hands behind the head to support the, the head and keep it still if you're, you have a tendency to move your head when we do the eye movements. So imagine that your eyes are two beautiful grandfather clocks. And we're going to open the eyes and inhale, bring the eyes up to 12 o'clock. You're still laying on your back. And then exhale down to six o'clock. Try to see your chin. Inhale up to 12 o'clock. Try to see your hairline. Exhale down to six o'clock, try to see your chin. Inhale up to 12 o'clock. Exhale down to six. And center and close the eyes. So we're warming up the eyes so we can have clear vision, so we can find the hidden treasures of hardship. Open the eyes once again and keep the eyes um, in <clears throat> open and inhale the eyes to the right. We're going to call that three o'clock. Try to see your right ear. Exhale to the left. Call that nine o'clock. Try to see your left ear. Inhale to the right at three o'clock. Exhale to the left at nine o'clock. Inhale to the right, three o'clock. Exhale to the left, nine o'clock. Bring the eyes center and close them. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, feel the tension leaving your eyes. Open the eyes once again. Inhale, bring the eyes up to 12 o'clock. And we'll move clockwise smoothly through the outer perimeter of the vision, moving to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3, 4, 5, 6 o'clock, 
seven, eight, nine o'clock, ten, eleven, twelve o'clock, one o'clock, two, three o'clock, four, and continue around the circle. Now, just like any other yoga pose, you're going to move into the fullest range of your motion. You want to get a nice stretch. As the eyes come back to 12 o'clock, go ahead and center the eyes and close them. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, relax, feeling the effects of netra vayayama, the eye movements. We'll open the eyes and do counterclockwise. Inhale the eyes up to 12. And now slowly moving to the um, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight. Keep going around the circle. This practice can help to relieve eye strain headaches, facial pressure. We can actually improve and our vision and increase the longevity of our vision. As you come back up to 12 o'clock, go ahead and center and close the eyes. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Keep your eyes closed and begin to extend your legs out one at a time. Have the legs nice and wide. Bring the arms down by your sides for a moment. Keep the eyes closed. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, relax. Keeping the eyes closed, bring the hands together in front of your face and rub the palms. Make the hands hot. This is also good for getting your heart rate up a little whenever we move the arms. And then go ahead and cup the eyes with your hands. And breathe heat, the heat and the warmth and the healing energy of your hands into your eyes. And as you're doing that, I'm gonna wake my way back to the mat. And you're gonna stay right there, breathing into your eyes. If you'd like, you could massage your temples a bit in one direction. And then the other. Massage down the jawline. And massage in the other direction in with the jaw. Massage the back of the neck a bit. Take a moment to massage your shoulders. <sighs> and then release the arms down by the sides and take another long deep breath in. And exhale, let go. Let the breath be natural.
Bring the legs together. Engage your belly muscles, so squeeze your belly muscles like you're wringing out your lower abdomen like a sponge. And bring your right knee up towards your chest. Hold the right knee with your hands. You can hold your shin, and if that's challenging for you, you could also use a strap over your shit to help you. If it's easy for you, you could interlace your fingers around your shin. And we're gonna take a deep breath in through the nose. And then exhale, lift your head and shoulders and draw your nose towards your knee. Keep holding your leg as you lower your head and inhale. Take another deep breath in. And then exhale, pull your right thigh into your belly. Hold the breath out for three, two, and one. Engage the navel and lengthen out that right leg. Relax the arms, let the legs release. Take a deep breath in. Let it go. Engage the navel, raise the left knee. Hold, you can hold behind the, the knee, but I prefer you hold the shin. Um, and again, you could use the strap if that serves you better or your belt. And we'll take a deep breath in. And exhale, draw the nose towards the knee. Keep holding the knee as you inhale and lower your head. Exhale. And take another deep breath in. And as you exhale, pull your thigh into your belly and hold the breath out for three, two, one, that is wind relieving pose. Go ahead and release the left leg. That's half wind relieving pose. Arda Apanasana. Take a breath and let it go. Okay, we're going to bring our legs together and bend the knees, feet on the floor. And place a supportive diamond your thumb and your pointer finger is together. And you're gonna lift up your um, buttocks a little and place that supportive diamond underneath your sacrum. So I'll show you what that might look like. If you were laying on your back and your yoga mat was glass, you would have this appearance. Okay. So, <clears throat> Go ahead and get that position stable. And this is great for a lot of reasons. One, it helps to um, massage your hands. But the reason, the other reason is that it helps you with your, it helps support your back with leg lifts. So go ahead and extend your legs out now and exhale through the nose. Take a deep breath in as you raise your right leg only and lift your right heel, push your left, uh, right heel up towards the ceiling. Draw the, draw the toes towards your face. I want you to feel that you have a stretch through the back of your right leg. That's how you know you've moved through the range of motion. And then as you exhale, grip the belly muscles and push out through the right heel as you lower down. Now do the same with the left leg. Inhale, raise the left up. Push out through the heel, draw the toes towards the face. You're moving through your fullest range of motion. You want to feel stretch to the back of your calf and hamstring. And then as you exhale, grip the belly muscles and lower the left leg down. Inhale, raise the right leg up, full range of motion. Exhale, lower the right leg down. Inhaling left leg up and exhaling, lowering it down. We're gonna to continue to move in alternate leg lifts. 
If you would like to, you're welcome to do the double leg lifts. And but honor your body. So if you want to do the double leg lifts, the next time the left leg lands, engage the navel and raise both your legs as you inhale. And exhale, lowering down. Otherwise, you're going to do one leg at a time. And this is sweet and gentle. So make sure you're treating your body with sweetness, with gentleness. Some people have really serious um, back issues, in which case you could have one knee bent with the foot on the floor and raise the opposite leg and lower that down and then bend the opposite leg, straighten the other one, raise it up and lower it down and then rebend it and repeat. So, we're going to go ahead and do one more round here. And then the next time the left leg lands, go ahead and separate the legs. Release the arms down by the sides. Turn the palms up. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, relax and let go. And just notice how you feel after your leg lifts. Okay, let's go ahead and bend the knees and hold the knees or behind the knees for this one either way. And you're just going to rock from left to right, ironing out any wrinkles in the lower back. So the closer you can bring your knees, towards your chest, uh, the better you'll get a massage on your lower back. And the reason I had us do those leg lifts is because during hardship, one of the hidden gifts that we receive is strength. We become stronger physically, emotionally, mentally, and most of all, spiritually. We grow in faith, we develop hope and trust. And let's come to stillness. Place the feet on the floor. Have the feet fist distance apart. Have the hands down by your sides, palms down. Pull your shoulder blades under, take a deep breath in. And exhale, press your lower back to the floor. Tighten the buttocks, tighten the belly, and raise the hips up. Keep shooting your hips towards your knees. Don't come up any higher than feel safe and comfortable for your lower back. Keep tightening the buttocks. Keep lifting the hips, lifting the belly, lifting the chest into bridge pose. So we're strengthening our lower body and sending the blood up towards the thyroid gland at the base of the throat. And we're bridging the gaps here. That's one of the gifts of calamity. We're bridging the gaps between nations, between races, between the sexes and religions. Muji Baba said, for the first time in human history, we are all at home with one another, one human family. Let's lengthen out the spine and lower down. Lengthen out the legs one at a time. And turn the palms up. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, relax, and let go. Notice how bridge pose feels on your body. And let's bend the knees, bring the feet to the floor. 
And again, you're going to hold your knees or your shins. If you're not able to do that, then go ahead and use a strap over your shins. And take a deep breath in. And exhale, lift the nose towards your knees. Usually once you lift your head, you can bring your hands a little closer towards one another. So you might be able to interlace your fingers or hold a wrist or hold your forearms or your elbows. And we'll take another deep breath in and exhale, draw the nose towards the knees even more. Hold the breath out for three, two, and one. Inhale, lower your head. And go ahead and bring the feet to the floor. Bring your hands down by your sides and lengthen your legs out one at a time. Let everything relax and flop open. Deep breath in and exhale, let go. We're going to do fish pose next. So bring the legs together. Bring the hands down by the sides, palms down. Reach your fingers down and bring your thumb and point your finger only your thumb and pointer finger under your thighs. The other three fingers are free by the side. Now, engage your navel, tuck your chin, push into your elbows and sit up halfway. Lift your chest, open your throat and place the top of your head on the floor. Keep, so your upper back should be off the ground and you don't want to try to get your forehead on the floor, just the back of the head, ideally the fontanelle, the little baby soft spot, but don't overdo it. I actually are, I'm not quite on the very top of my head, I'm a little bit behind there because it hurts my neck to come deeper. So honor your body and a big smile here in Matsi Asana Fish Pose. Breathe deeply into your upper chest and throat center. This is for our immunity. And the fish pose is so symbolic to me when we're talking about the hidden gifts of catastrophe. We learn the old ways. We remember the old ways. We remember, and for some of you, maybe they're not the old ways. For many people, it feels ancient to remember how to garden remember how to grow our own food or fish or sew or mend. This is beautiful ways of being and remembering our self-sufficiency. Let's push into the elbows, tuck the chin and lengthen the spine and open up the legs again, turn the palms up, take a deep breath in and exhale, let go. Inhale the shoulders to the ears and exhale, relax. Turn your head to the right and turn your head to the left. And bring your head center, take a deep breath in and let it all go. Feel your body. Raise your arm over your head and roll onto your side and slowly push yourself up. Pause there for a moment. And we're going to come up and do um, <clears throat> cat cow. So coming onto all fours, have the hands underneath the shoulders, the knees under the hips. The fingers spread out wide, pick up the belly muscles, push the tailbone back so the lower back is flattened and look straight down at your hands. Knees should be fist distance apart. And you might like to put a blanket under your knees if you have sensitivity to your knees. I'll actually show you how to do that. So I, I open my blanket about this much so it's not so wide and then put the blanket under the knees. 
<clears throat> and we're going to exhale and tuck the tailbone around the spine. Draw the forehead towards the thighs. And inhale, lift the tailbone, open the chest, look up. And exhale, tuck the tailbone around the spine, push into the hands and shins. And inhale, lift the tailbone, open the chest and look up. Exhaling, rounding, over accentuating the rounding. Inhaling, lifting the chest and looking up. And exhaling, rounding once again. And inhaling, lifting the tailbone, dropping the belly, looking up. Once more, exhale, round into cat. Inhale, lift into cow. Good. Come to a neutral spine. <clears throat> if you're using the blanket, you can go ahead and remove that blanket. And we're going to come up. And you might, you can come up any way that you'd like, but you might like to try stepping one foot forward, curling the back toe under, hands on your hips, use your belly muscles, lift the back knee, and step forward. But any way will do. We're going to do one short sun salutation <clears throat> to have the, so have the feet fist distance apart. I'm going to ground down through the feet, tuck the tailbone, engage the navel, and turn the shoulders up, back and down. Turn the palms forward. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, relax. Just to remember what this feels like to have a proper posture. And exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, hook the thumbs, reach up. Think about taller, root down through the feet, and lift the chest upward. Don't take any pressure in your lower back. Move your arms back as far as you can. Push your hands up, and then open your wings, and exhale, fold down. Let's bring the hands to the thighs. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. And exhale, fold all the way down once again. And then you might like to bring your hands either right next to your toes, fingers next to your toes, or you can put your hands on blocks. And then we're going to step that left foot back as far as we can and bring the left knee to the ground and sink the hips open the chest. I'm just going to take one or two breaths here. And then bring your right knee back to meet your left knee. Come off of your blocks if you're using them and bring your hands back to the mat. Spread your fingers out wide, middle finger points forward. Curl the toes under. Hook up the knees, push the buttocks back behind you. Broaden your collarbones into forming an upside down V. Keep pressing into the roots of your fingers where the fingers enter the palm, don't land in the wrist and lengthen the spine. Imagine someone's pulling your hips back, push down through your heels, take a breath here. And come down to your knees. Strong belly, squeeze those belly muscles, shift forward. We need to strengthen our arms a little bit. Pull the elbows back and bring your chest and your chin to the floor. And then reach the legs back behind you. Really reach the thigh bones out of the hip sockets, reach the toes forward and draw the nose to neck and chest forward. Pull the elbows back, pull the shoulders back, push the chest through the hands. Good. Long deep breaths here into uh, our upper back. And then come back to all fours. Curl the toes under once again. Lift the hips back up. Lengthen the spine. Press the buttocks back. Broaden the collarbones. Spread through the toes. Take a breath here. Keep pushing down through the feet and hands. And now bring your knees to the floor. 
you're using blocks, bring your hands back to the blocks and step the left foot forward between the hands. Sink the hips, draw the chest forward, pull the collarbones open, draw the shoulder blades down. Take a breath or two here. And then curl the back toes under, step it forward to the front. Bring the hands to the thighs, inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold all the way down. Pull the belly muscles back, hook the thumbs, reach up. Tighten the buttocks, tighten the belly, lift the chest. And exhale, hands to the heart. Separate the arms and legs. Inhale the shoulders to the ears and let go. Shake out the wrist. Circle the wrist in one direction and circle them in the other direction. Great. Okay, so we're going to come back down to sit on our blankets. Keep your blocks nearby because you might want them. <clears throat> Go ahead and um, actually, I'm gonna keep my blanket folded like in a rectangle. I'm gonna grab some music because I hear the garbage truck going by. <laughs> this is the real yoga TV show. <laughs> and then we're gonna have a wide we're gonna have a wide-legged, do a wide-legged fold. So make sure your legs are wide. You might wanna turn sideways on your mat if the furniture is in your way. So before we turn, um, fold forward, we're gonna do a side bend. So have your right hand on your right thigh, navel back, tailbone down, and reach the left arm up. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, slide your right hand down the right leg and reach the left arm up and breathe deeply into the left side body. You might like to turn your head down or up. So don't worry about where your right hand is. It might be on your shin here, but just let it happen. It's okay. Take a few breaths. Keep reaching that left hand away from the left hip. And engage the navel. Come on up and release the left hand down. Take a breath. Let go. Inhale, right arm up. And side bend to the left. Let that left hand glide. And again, it can be here near your shin or maybe your ankle or your foot. And keep reaching the right hand away from your right hip. Long, deep breaths. Your head can look forward or down or even up. But I think most people at the gent for the gentle class prefer forward or down. And engage the navel. Come on up and lower your hand down. So <clears throat> you could, for the next one, if you'd like, put a couple of blocks in front of you when you come into this forward fold <clears throat> or none. I'm gonna use one block probably, my own self, and that you can use whatever you want. Try to keep the knees up there's a tendency to roll forward and you might get a little bit of that, but do your best to try to keep the knees up. Otherwise you start to come out of the fold, okay? And then bring the hands in front of you. Take a deep breath in and fold from your hips. Lead with your chest. Walk your hands forward mindfully. And then you can bring your forehead to whatever supports. And you might have that, not have supports and that's fine. Your arms might be straight and just let the head hang or you can let the head come down to your supports. Okay. 
So breathe deeply into your legs, into your back muscles. We're stretching the hamstrings. And so one of the incredible gifts of adversity is that we learn to be open open to the possibilities, open to new ways of being. And let's go ahead and engage the navel and walk the hands back up. Take a breath and let go. Let everything relax. Very good. So we're going to bring the soles of the feet together now, just like we did at the beginning of class with the knees open into uh, Baddha Konasana bound angle pose, or for the purpose of today's class, we'll call it butterfly. So sitting up tall, make sure you haven't rolled into your tailbone. So you'll know that because you'll have this more of this appearance. You want to be on the front edge of the sits bones. And that's why we use the blanket to kind of help us get to that place. And again, you could use a couple of blocks here in front of you, or you could use no blocks or maybe just one. Okay. And hold, pull the heels in towards your groin. Okay. And if you want, you can fill the space here with some pillows underneath. And this will be the pose that we hold the longest today. So if you want to use your blocks under your knees instead, and then just use your hands to, to support you as you come forward, that's fine too. So we're going to start off by holding the ankles and engage the navel, inhale, lengthen, and then guide with your heart, fold from your hips. And then you can walk your hands forward, relax your head. Your head can hang. If you're able to bend your elbows and bring the elbows down, you could do that as well. And if your arms are straight, that's fine, no big deal. Just don't lock the elbows. Try to have a little bit of a micro bend in the elbows. Breathe into the hips, into the groin. You might feel the piriformis, that large muscle in your lower back being stretched here. And I think the biggest gift that I've received during this time of challenge and crisis is the opportunity to look within. We are all have this incredible opportunity to stop running around and to come inside our homes and inside ourselves. And it's like we're being sent into our cocoon. And much like a caterpillar inside its cocoon, it doesn't yet know that it will be a butterfly, that it will emerge immaculate and brilliant and able to fly. So sharp crisis gives us that metamorphosis. And 
And then engaging the navel, slowly come on up. And you can go ahead and extend one leg out and then the other. Sit up tall. And inhale your arms out to the sides. Make sure you're still on the front edge of your sits bones. Inhale, lengthen your spine and exhale, twist to the right. Bring your left hand outside your right thigh and the right hand behind you. Inhale, lengthen your spine again. Exhale, push the tailbone down and roll your ribs to the right. Roll your shoulders to the right. Turn your head and look to the right. Or spinal twist. So yes, while hardship does put a twist in our plans, it also gives a twist to the end result. Often we're heading to a place that's even more beautiful than we could have imagined. Inhale, open the arms out to the sides. Come center. Exhale, turn to the left. Bring your right hand outside your thigh, left hand behind, engage the navel, lengthen, and twist from belly, chest, and shoulders. Pull that left shoulder back. Turn your head to the left. Keep the spine long. Belly button is slightly pulled back to protect the lower back. Breathe deep into the thoracic. That's the rib cage. And engage the navel, come center. Good. Inhale, bring the shoulders to the ears. Exhale, let go. And we're going to set up for deep relaxation now. So you might like to um, bundle up, put some layers on. And I'm going to put a pillow under my head and <sighs> cover up with a blankie and a bolster under my knees to show you how I like to relax. So I usually put the bolster in the middle of my mat and then I'll put a pillow up at the top. <clears throat> And then once I get laying down, I'll, I'll just bring my blanket with me. <clears throat> but you want to lay so that the knees are draping over the bolster and the feet are nice and wide. Excuse me, my tree bear. <laughs> you might even have a little doggy or a little pet near you that wants to cuddle up. My tree loves the yoga energy. So he's always like, oh, mom, you're doing the yoga. I'm going to just hang out right here. When he was a puppy, he used to get more... You're okay. You're good. I used to get more involved, <laughs> but not so much anymore. Okay. So laying down, and if you don't have something under your knees, that's fine too. You can still do this, but it's just more comfortable. And then put the get the pillow underneath your head so you're nice and supported. And while you guys are getting making all your final adjustments, I'm going to get some um, get the timer going so that we don't lose track of time. Okay, so let's go ahead and close the eyes and take one final deep breath in. Hold the breath. And exhale, let the whole body relax. I'm going to be here for about 10 minutes, so make sure you're comfortable and warm. This is the most important part of our practice. 
So just become aware of how your feet and your legs feel. Keep them still. Feel the feet and legs from the inside out. And then begin to feel your hands and your arms. And feel your hands and your arms from the inside out too. Feel the back and the belly and chest. Feel the torso from the inside out. And then begin to feel the shoulders and neck from the inside out as well. Feel the inner face. Feel the head. And then begin to feel the whole body. Feel the whole body from the inside out. And notice how this body is breathing, feel the inflow of the breath, the natural pause between the inhale and exhale. Feel the exhale and the natural pause between the exhale and the inhale. And now begin to notice, without any judgment or opinions, just notice what's happening inside the mind. Notice the stillness or the movement, the activity or inactivity inside the mind. Just be a silent witness, silent observer. Now ask yourself if I'm able to see my thoughts without any judgment or opinion, then who am I? What am I?
You are more than body. You're more than breath. You are more than brains. You are more. You don't have to try to be more. You already are more. Relax in that knowing. Rest in that knowing.
And just becoming aware that this peace is your true self, the real you. And then roll onto one side. Take a breath there. And mindfully begin to push yourself up. You can sit on your bolster or your blanket. You might like to have a comfortable cross leg position. Maybe you want to put a couple of blocks under your knees. You can always keep yourself bundled up in your blankie if you'd like. Times I like to do that. And we're going to go ahead and sit up tall and take a deep breath in, sweep the arms out and up. And exhale, bring the hands to the heart. And then turn the palms up by your sides on your lap. We'll do Kapalabhati breath, just a short one round. I encourage you all to go to the Kapalabhati video on this channel to get a further explanation. And it's about a seven minute practice. Um, you should be doing that every day for your lungs. So we're going to go ahead and just do a short one just to remind ourselves. So it's the breath that um, pumps the abdomen and comes out of the nostrils and it looks and sounds like this. It's a passive inhale. We're not focusing on the inhale at all. It's just the out breath. So sit up tall, take a deep breath in, exhale completely, inhale a little sip in and begin on my third. Exhale completely. Inhale deeply. Deepest breath you've taken all morning or day or night, whenever you're practicing this video. Later, maybe you're watching the replay and exhale, let go. Keep your awareness within. Mm. Wonderful. I'm just keeping your eyes closed. Take a moment to visualize this next 24 hours being lived out from a place of calm, comfortable confidence. Om Shanti, 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 peace, peace, peace to you. Bring the palms together. We'll close with our peace sloka. You're welcome to just listen if you're learning. Exhale, inhale. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. Namaste. The divine in me honors the divine in you knows that we are one. Sweet blessings to all of you. And let us remember that we are one human family. We are one universe. We are one energy field. 
And if you found this video helpful, please like it, subscribe to our channel, and share it, comment, let me know what you thought. By sharing this, you might help someone who really needs yoga and who needs a gentle practice. And again, you can um, sign up on our um, email list at theyogalily.com. That's T-H-E-Y-O-G-A-L-I-L-Y.com. You can also make a donation there. And again, um, we'll be moving our regularly scheduled classes to the Zoom platform um, starting tomorrow. There'll still be lots of videos I'll be posting here and there on YouTube, but um, it'll be a different schedule. So to TBA, mm -hmm. have a beautiful, calm, confident, comfortable day. And fly butterflies.